Toronto Police released this video of a second person of interest in the premeditated slaying of environment philanthropist Glenn Davis. The second possible suspect in the May 18, 2007 murder was photographed with the possible gunman at least twice about an hour before the ambush slaying in a Toronto parking garage. Both men were photographed leaving the underground garage where the murder occurred, and that concerns detectives. After reviewing countless hours of video, we have discovered new images of the suspect at various locations in and around the building. Also captured on video is a second person who has become of interest in our investigation. At this point, this person's role in the murder, if any, is undetermined. He was seen in the company of, a suspect, uh, of the suspect on at least two occasions about an hour before the murder was committed. There is no doubt in my mind that these people know each other. The fact that they are seen entering and exiting the building, or sorry, the underground garage where the murder occurred is concerning. I suggest this person contact us directly at the Homicide Squad. Police are amazed at the planning that went into this murder and the coolness of the gunman who waited for Davis, killed his prey, and calmly left the area. Toronto homicide detectives hope you may have information about the case or the two persons of interest. Both persons of interest are white males. This person is described as a male white, 20 to 25 years, 5 foot 10 to 6 foot 1, about 160 pounds, slim build, short dark hair, wearing blue jeans and a black shirt. Anyone with information on either one of these suspects is asked, any one of these people is asked to contact the homicide squad. The first suspect, the possible gunman, is described as a white male in his mid to late 20s, about 5 feet 8 inches tall with a medium build. He was last seen wearing a black baseball cap, a light colored hooded jacket, dark jeans with faded patches on the front and back legs, a blue sweater underneath the jacket, white running shoes, and a blue knapsack. We haven't been able to confirm uh, exactly the sequence of events um, that led to the murder. Uh, what we've been able to establish um, is the movements of the people that we're interested in, uh, including uh, the movements of our victim. Um, we're slowly piecing together uh, what brought um, our suspect in contact with our victim and um, uh, because we have no eyewitness to the actual murder itself, it's, uh, it's a little clouded right now. Uh, we just know that uh, our victim had been at the building for some time and had at some point made his way into the underground parking lot where our uh, suspect, the person pictured here in the uh, gray jacket, was um, already waiting. We've had some information uh, through Crime Stoppers come forward. Um, we've investigated those leads um, some of those investigations have concluded and we've eliminated the information that we've uh, received. Um, some of those investigations, so the, the, the nature of the uh, information provided um, still needs to be followed up on. Toronto Police have not said publicly what evidence was collected at the crime scene. No, we don't know the identity of the suspect. We're appealing to the, uh, to the public to come forward. We are hoping that uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the initial photographs that we released um, did not trigger anything in, in um, or thought of who it could be in somebody's mind. However, when coupled with the second person who um, who uh, is not wearing anything covering his uh, his head, um, we're hoping that that triggers something. Uh, two people that always hang out together, that are friends, that match the description. Uh, the the person of interest in the black shirt is much taller than the uh, suspect, and uh, we're hoping that. Um, this triggers um, some thought in somebody's mind. The killer apparently laid in wait as Davis finished lunch. Although police are unsure if his murder is connected to a previous attack on his life or his generous environmental donations. The, the, uh, the previous incident where the victim was beaten, uh, where have you been able to find out about that incident? We've investigated um, um, some leads in that investigation uh, from 2005, December of 2005. We've spoken and conducted interviews in regards to that investigation and at this point we're not, um, we don't believe it's connected uh, but we haven't totally excluded that possibility. There's clearly uh, things that are missing from the victim um, that um, 
on, on its face may appear to be a robbery. However, we're not prepared at this time to, uh, to say that that is uh, the motive. Uh, certainly, uh, criminal offenses have been committed in this city and other jurisdictions that have been made to look like other crimes. And at this point, we have no evidence to support um, that theory alone. So, so what do you think? What is the theory? We've been able to narrow it down to a few theories that uh, the evidence um, most likely supports. Uh, we're not hanging our hat on any one of those theories just yet. We're, uh, we're going to let uh, this play out. And uh, once these people are identified, and, and we're confident that uh, given uh, these new images here and, and this second person, that somebody will come forward and uh, provide us with that information. From that point on, we, uh, we firmly believe that our investigation will uh, spring forward quite quickly. Toronto homicide detectives told reporters they need the public's help. One of your theories is that he was targeted, though, that, that they were after him, or someone was after him. He was selected for some reason. Uh, what that reason is, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. There's uh, nothing in uh, Mr. Davis's background that would um, cause us concern, that would uh, lead us to believe that he put himself at risk through his uh, endeavors, uh, be it professionally or personally. Um, Certainly, it's uh, it's a, an avenue of investigation. It's something that we've worked very hard to uh, to try to uncover. Um, there is, n to this point, to this date, there is nothing there that would uh, concern me or lead me to believe that it, it's somehow related to his murder. These, we're confident that these images here are the best ones that would lead to uh, to uh, identifying these two people. Um, and these are the ones that we're releasing. We, we have other images, but uh, we, uh, we believe that these ones here are the ones that would uh, help us identify these suspects the best. Are they in the parking garage, though, both these men? I know the suspect is, but is the person of interest also seen in the parking garage? Well, as you can see, this door here where um, the, the suspect uh, with the, or, sorry, where the uh, person of interest with the black shirt and the suspect were seen exiting, um, that leads into the underground uh, parking garage. Um, those um, those stairs can also lead to another part within the building. So um, I don't, uh, I can't confirm any of that information at this time. But sorry, I, I have them entering and leaving that door right there, which leads into the underground, but can also lead to another portion of the building. Two of them were hanging around the building at least for at least an hour before. It's they're they're not uh, they're not together long within the underground but I'm not I'm not going to get into specific times it, it plays into our investigation but this is uh, so this is about are you saying though whether or not this is about an hour before the murder yeah it, it's about an hour so conceivably they're standing outside of the restaurant where mr. Davis is when he's in there yes yes sorry mr. Davis is in the restaurant at that point when they're walking in just to be clear uh, yes the uh, you can just see uh, outlines of uh, a planter's box that's right here and some chairs that are in this image here. That is the outdoor patio of the restaurant and uh, we believe uh, Mr. Davis to be inside of that restaurant at this time. Uh, we have no information that they went into the restaurant. It's uh, the Granite Brewery. It's on the main floor of 245 Eglinton Avenue East. We have uh, sought and, and, and have been assisted by members of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police um, within a province in Ontario. I'm not going to really allude to which province it is. Uh, people who are connected with the family uh, um, uh, will know this information. Um, I will also say that um, we had also been uh, and still are actively seeking a um, person who may potentially be a witness who was smoking white filtered matinee cigarettes um, on the P2 level of the parking garage at 245 Eglinton Avenue East. The uh, white filtered uh, matinee cigarettes. Um, the white filtered cigarettes, the, that person there we believe uh, given the proximity uh, that those cigarettes were found to where our murder occurred that that person is potentially a witness. Davis inherited his father's $100 million transportation and trucking fortune. The 66-year-old murder victim gave millions of dollars to a wide range of environmental causes, including the World Wildlife Fund. Davis shunned publicity, but was well-known and respected by environmental groups, who join his friends in disbelief and outrage over the calculated and brutal murder. Davis escaped death twice before. 
In December 2005, Davis was severely beaten with a baseball bat outside his Toronto office. But onlookers got involved and saved his life. That attacker left in a van, no arrests were made, and police are unsure if it's connected to his murder. Meanwhile, in June 1983, Davis was aboard an Air Canada jet en route to Toronto that caught fire and made an emergency landing at the Greater Cincinnati Airport. The acrid fire destroyed the plane and claimed 23 lives. Davis was among 18 people to survive the inferno. The victims included Canadian folk star Stan Rogers. According to reports, Davis's life was forever changed by that fatal fire. He soon began donating millions of dollars to environmental causes. Police want anyone who recognizes the persons of interest or have any information on the murder to call Toronto Crime Stoppers or homicide detectives. I don't think that uh, nobody knows this guy. I think that uh, people out there know exactly who this person is. Uh, given um, what we know of uh, um, the actions that, uh, or his actions that day, um, there might be a, a sense of fear from the, out there in the community and the people that know him, and uh, um, which has prevented them from coming forward. I, I don't, um, when you ask me if I'm surprised, I, I'm, I'm not overly surprised. There's, there's a many, many different reasons why people don't come forward uh, with information right off the bat. Call area code 416-222-TIPS. That's 416-222-8477. Or call the Toronto Police Homicide Squad at area code 416-808-7400. That's area code 416-808-7400. You can also provide confidential information on the Toronto Crime Stoppers webpage. Their website, 222tips.com. Again, that's 222tips.com. This is Greg Peterson, and you're watching Earthkeeper TV.